O oh Lord our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us, nor do we know what to do. But our eyes are upon you. Amen. Lord, please help me to be here. I was getting very hungry. I hadn't eaten much. Maybe you should eat before the rosary, he said. I will try. And he said, I'll remind you. And I said, thank you. The Lord began, things are taking time, and this is all by design. It is planned that food shall be scarce during the hottest months of the year when people are most volatile. Forgive me, Lord, I'm caught up in making provision for the community. Is this wrong? He said, futile, because you are not relying on me. Don't you know that I own the cattle and the plants and the water and all the means of sustenance in my hands? It's a distraction. Lord, I'm consumed with this. I know. Better for you to concentrate on what you were doing for souls and leave the rest to my hands. Really, this is an issue that is distracting you, and I would like you to release it and trust me. It's taking away from what is really important to me. Do you understand? Make a suggestion and then drop it. Focus on the gifts I've given you writing, music, intimacy with me, cleaving to me through all the distractions. You must enlist others when you are being taken away from your work. You cannot allow this to happen. They are directly attacking those around you to create chaos and concern that shifts your focus from your music to the distractions they cause. Beloved, I am giving you a new grace the grace to ignore those things that are not under your jurisdiction. You will not be here much longer, and I so desire to see you finish your work the most that you can. The fasting is helping, and I have not abandoned you when you fall. I just nudge you with a feeling that this is disordered, and then it's your turn to listen and obey. Please, Claire, I try so hard to get your attention by a feeling of disquiet, a whisper, if you will. This is not for you to do. You are not using your time wisely. Quote, unquote. Practice this every day and see if you don't get a monumental amount of work done during that time. So I'm going to be calling on the community to relieve me with Father and that kind of thing. I said, Lord, I receive this grace and I will try. That's my good girl, he said. <laughs> Then I asked him, what just happened here when one of our people had an epileptic seizure and the other a heavy and extremely painful oppression? Jesus replied, you already know it. You just don't trust what you hear. They sent missiles of evil to disrupt your prayers because your prayers are highly effective. Please listen to that still small voice and stop doubting, beloved. You should know by now, when these things happen, that they are sent to disrupt prayers and pull all of you off course. And I'm thinking the principality over this should be distractions. Principal demon orchestrating all these things, a spirit of distraction. How long are you going to allow these things, Lord? He answered me, that's not the right question. What you should be asking is where are the holes and how can you plug them? Also, what else can you give up eating for a fast and asking me to train you in the weapons you need to prevent these things? There will always be assignments against you until the world is cleansed of evil. These make you stronger in fighting so you can gain the victory over your assailants. You most definitely need to increase your strategies and expertise with your weapons. Each of you sees or senses something. Let that be written into your prayers and approaches to evil. It is much better to be on the offensive than to be a sitting duck drawn into a defensive posture to protect yourself. You need to learn more about your weapons and how to use them how to prepare for a meeting so it will not be disrupted. Things will get more intense. You must prepare ahead of time through fasting, prayer, and exercising your gifts. Above all, allow no disunity to come between you. 
stay a united whole, building another up, never allowing yourself to find fault. You are soldiers in my army, and just like any other soldier, you must drill and acquire the skill to be prepared for what is coming. And I do bring up the areas you need to strengthen, but sometimes you're so distracted, lethargic, and not paying close attention until the battle hits you right in the face. By then it is much too late, so you sustain injuries. I want you to learn the art of warfare and never allow the enemy's narrative to take over. Rather, drill him right back down into the ground and hell and claim your victory. You have so many weapons, but are abysmally short on how to implement them. This is because you're not listening very carefully and miss my instructions until the enemy is upon you. You have the means to shut him down. Now use it, my beloved ones. Second Chronicles 20 Jehoshaphat defeats Moab and Ammon. After this, the Moabites and the Ammonites, with some of the Meunites, came to wage war against Jehoshaphat. Some people came and told Jehoshaphat, A vast army is coming against you from Edom, from the other side of the Dead Sea. It is already in Hezazan, Tamar, that is in Gedi. Alarmed, Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord, and he proclaimed a fast for all of Judah. The people of Judah came together to seek help from the Lord. Indeed, they came from every town in Judah to seek him. Then Jehoshaphat stood up in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem at the temple of the Lord in the front of the new courtyard and said, Lord, the God of our ancestors, are you not the God who is in heaven? You rule over all the kingdoms of the nations. Power and might are in your hand, and no one can withstand you. Our God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend? They have lived in it and have built it a sanctuary in your name, saying, If calamity comes upon us, whether the word of judgment or plague or famine, we will stand in your presence before this temple that bears your name and will cry out to you in our distress, and you will hear us and save us. But now here are men from Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whose territory you would not allow Israel to invade when they came from Egypt. So they turned away from them and did not destroy them. See how they are repaying us by coming to drive us out of the possession you gave us as an inheritance? Our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. All the men of Judah, with their wives and children and little ones, stood there before the Lord. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jeriel, the son of Mataniah, a Levite, and descendant of Asaph, as he stood in the assembly. He said, Listen, King Jehoshaphat, and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours but God's. Tomorrow, march down against them. They will be climbing up by the pass of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the gorge in the desert of Jurel. You will not have to fight this battle. Take up your positions and stand firm, and see the deliverance of the Lord that he will give you, Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go out to face them tomorrow, and the Lord will be with you. Jehoshaphat bowed down with his face to the ground, and all the people of Judah and Jerusalem fell down in worship before the Lord. Then some of the Levites from the Kohathites and the Korahites stood up and praised the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud voice. 
Early in the morning, they left for the desert of Tekoa. As they set out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Listen to me, Judah, and people of Jerusalem. Have faith in the Lord your God, and you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophets, and you will be successful. After consulting the people, Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness as they went out at the head of the army, saying, Give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. As they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, who were invading Judah, and they were defeated. The Ammonites and Moabites rose up against the men from Mount Seir to destroy and annihilate them. After they finished slaughtering the men of Seir, they helped to destroy one another. When the men of Judah came to the place that overlooks the desert and looked toward the vast army, they saw only dead bodies lying on the ground. No one had escaped. So Jehoshaphat and his men went to carry off their plunder, and they found among them a great amount of equipment and clothing, and also articles of value, more than they could take away. There was so much plunder that it took three days to collect it. On the fourth day they assembled in the valley of Berekah, where they praised the Lord God. And this is why it is called the valley of Berekah to this day. Then, led by Jehoshaphat, all the men of Judah and Jerusalem returned joyfully to Jerusalem, for the Lord had given them cause to rejoice over their enemies. They entered Jerusalem and went to the temple of the Lord with harps and lyres and trumpets. The fear of God came on all the surrounding kingdoms when they heard how the Lord had fought against the enemies of Israel, and the kingdom of Jehoshaphat was at peace, for his God had given him rest on every side. Amen.